Combine Total Access Program. Damien Barrett with Paul Daffy and Kevin Sheen. And guys, it's time to get into the uh, panel, a real expert, Geelong's Stephen Wells. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Thank you. The Cats have had a bit of a news this afternoon with uh, John, the, the coach, Bomber Thompson. What's he done? He's had a meeting with Brian Cook and Neil Baum this morning after um, perhaps thinking about things overnight where he felt that he needed to express to the club that he wanted a couple of days more to think about his coaching future. I guess he's uh, had a long campaign at Geelong. Um, perhaps the disappointment of not uh, achieving all we wanted to achieve this year is now going to take an extra couple of days to decide what his future is as coach of Geelong. The other big cloud hanging over the club's head is the movement of the key player, Gary Ablis. Mm -hmm. uh, what day are we expecting a final announcement on that? Uh, by the end of this week, we'd be very hopeful of knowing by Friday whether Gary's staying or going. Uh, Are you still I'm, holding on to the hope he might stay? I am. Until I'm told that he's going, I'm going to uh, believe that he's staying because he's a Geelong player. I know he loves the Geelong footy club and uh, it's an enormous decision for him if he does go. Uh, and as I said, until I'm told he's gone, I'm believing he's staying. And these two issues are linked to some point. If, if Bomber Thompson and Gary Ablett both go, does that change your way of, of approaching the draft? It certainly provides a different set of circumstances for us. Uh, we've got a tremendously experienced group of people down at Geelong with Brian and uh, Neil Baum of course and Stephen Hocking as well as our recruiting team so uh, whilst we, if we didn't have a coach and that's not to say Mark won't be there but if we didn't have a coach um, we'll certainly get the job done through trade week and uh, up here at the draft combine um, and if Gary goes uh, well we'll deal with those circumstances as they arise it'll uh, have some impact on our list management. St Stephen, um, you were made to look old and slow in the, uh, in the uh, preliminary final. Will the emphasis be on drafting for pace this year? Uh, every year we try and bring some speed into the game. We certainly don't ignore the blokes that are, are quick. Uh, that was a bad night for us. We didn't uh, at all handle the, the way Colin had played, but uh, I'm sure that with some tweaking of our game plan and uh, some extra fitness, some young fellows coming through the club that are already uh, quick and have been drafted with that speed... Um, we think that we can improve next year anyway. With this year's draft group, um, yes, we're always looking for speed, but we're also mainly looking for talented footballers. Now, Wellesley, tell us about your thought process as a club, a list management sort of thought process. You've got 27, choice 27, choice 41 at the minute. Will you analyse the talent that's up here? Uh, will you consider trading? Tell us how you, you go into this combine thinking about the, the choices in front of you. Yes, we know that uh, we've got late picks in the draft. And he, most teams have been pushed back this year. All teams have been pushed back. But uh, uh, we come up here with a very open mind about the, the players. We uh, haven't finalised our draft list yet in terms of order or priority. Uh, we like to see what happens up here at the Combine. We'll interview a lot of players over the course of the four days up here. We'll certainly touch base with all of them. Uh, we've done a lot of interviews at houses already. and um, So their performance is in the skills testing, uh, on the in the fitness testing, physical capabilities, uh, combined with what we learn and observe of them while we're up here, uh, will have an impact on what we do at the trade week next week and then with the number of selections we might have too. But there's a lot of planning goes into it over the course of uh, a number of years. I guess we're getting to the point yet now and uh, uh, once you finish playing, you really hone in on those sort of aspects. Stephen, one of your great success stories at the draft was Joel Sauer back in, in 06, wasn't it? I mean, it's still talked about as being one of the great recruiting uh, scenarios. You've also grabbed other players at, at low picks, haven't you, like Johnson and, and Chapman. Just take us through some of your experiences at the draft camp and into the draft. Um, yes, yeah, so we were very lucky with Joel Seward, obviously. We, we'd hoped to finish a lot, higher, a lot higher on the ladder that year and uh, to get the draft pick we did was disappointing, but for it to turn out that it was Joel Seward coming through to us uh, was a real bonus for us. But you're right about Steve Johnson and Paul Chapman and Corey Enright, who's an All-Australian, didn't come to the combine, but uh, those late picks are very valuable for clubs and uh, I think we all realise now that uh, first-round picks... You're very disappointed if they don't turn out to be fantastic players. They're so analysed and uh, so well performed in their draft year. Uh, but it's those later picks that make the difference to the strength of your list. So uh, we are relying on the fact that um, we're going to analyse these, these players and come up with some good late picks, we hope. And your best late pick, uh, Corey Enright taken over, Darren Milburn up around the 50 mark. Uh, tell us your, your favourite story of one of those late picks. Well, it could be uh, either one of those two. I mean, Darren Milburn's going to go down as one of the club all-time greats, already played over 270 games um, and a couple of premierships. That combined with uh, Corey Enright, even Max Rook coming through the rookie draft. Yeah. Stephen King was uh, uh, not a late pick, but he was drafted a year earlier than uh, the players are eligible to be drafted these days. So... 
Cameron Lings was a uh, captain at Geelong Footy Club this year and played in two premierships being drafted late in the 30s. So um, I think every club's got great stories about players that have come through. Missed, uh, missed out on being drafted a bit early. I think we read it on the weekend about Dane Swan uh, being a late draft choice. And uh, I think if we had the drafts again sometimes, we'd re- rearrange the order, but uh, those late picks are crucial. Stephen, um, some clubs put, their, put the draft prospects through a rigorous questioning process. Uh, Port Adelaide comes to mind under Mark Williams. What's your approach? Um, we we try to find out as much as we can about the players from people around the players, whether it be their teachers or player managers, uh, their coaches at club level. And then when we get into an interview situation with the players, we try to make things pretty relaxed for them, uh, give them the opportunity to, to uh, get to know us a bit, but also open up. And we find that by... Um, uh, providing a reasonably relaxed environment, still asking some tough questions and uh, uh, trying to find out everything we possibly can about their football makeup, their intelligence, their characteristics and character. Um, uh, we find that that relaxed that, um, attitude works for us. Stephen, you mentioned uh, Milburn before. Is he locked away for next year? Uh, no, Darren Milburn's uh, not locked away for next year. So his, his future may still be uh, brought to an end at the end of this uh, 2010 season just completed? Uh, that's one option, or he may, he may also still play on. That's to be decided. Um, and uh, Darren Milburn's held in the highest respect down at Geelong Footy Club, and uh, I think that decision will be uh, Darren's. Sure. Stephen, thanks for joining us today on Combine Total Access. That's a pleasure. Stephen yeah. Wells, Geelong Recruiting Manager. Next up will be Andrew Gaff. You're watching Combine Total Access. It's on daily. It's on AFL.com.au. It's also on the footy channel on Big Pond TV at 5.30pm, Australian Eastern Standard Time, and replayed again at 9. Rob. <laughs>